educational ministry and leadership training to the development of hymn books, mission and service funds support communities of faith. Today I'm meeting with Jennifer Jansen Ball, Executive Minister for Theological Leadership, to discuss how mission and service supports our community of faith leaders. Jennifer, thanks for being with us this morning. I'm happy to be here. Thanks, Alexa. And how does mission and service support um, provide leadership in the church and globally? In terms of theological education, mission and service provides funds in a few different ways. One is through candidate aid bursaries, which go directly to people who are studying for ministry in, in all three streams of ministry. Um, we also provide grants to our theological schools, and so that contributes to the teaching uh, and theological education, broadly speaking, uh, throughout the church, which is um, both for those who are studying for ministry, but also interested lay people, uh, people who are in ministry who want to uh, continue to deepen their skills, participate in continuing education. Uh, so, so mission and service contributes directly to, to those options for people. What are the challenges in, in the theological education today? And, and maybe a second part to that is, is how are we helping to address those? Of course, COVID has been a challenge for all of us and has been particularly for the schools in terms of, of needing to shift um, all the ways that they offer theological education. Sa same as the rest of the church, we've all had to do that. Um, and the schools have also very intentionally uh, offered kind of pastoral care and support to students throughout the pandemic and tried to address those needs as well. So it's not only about shifting how education has been offered, but also to, to continue to support students in their theological education journey. Yeah, and you referenced that, that in their attempts to provide that theological ed education, there's been cutbacks that, that impact uh, the studies. And um, I'm wondering, why this matters, what's, what the impacts are and how we address those. Part of the impact in terms of um, decreasing the grants to the schools is, of course, it's more challenging for schools to offer the programs that, that they want to offer and that they see a need for. Um, and it also means that the schools are continuing to find other funding sources and um, as that, and that's really important and builds relationships and partnerships. Right. And if we talk to some of the donors, what do you think um, their answer would be about why they support theological leadership and education? Reasons vary. I mean, partly, I think people donate because they've had their own experience of theological education and really value it and want to uh, be part of helping that to continue. Um, I think others in congregations see the value in terms of the education that their minister has had and the way the minister is able to uh, walk with them in their faith journeys. Um, and still others, um, I think, just value various ways of, of educating people and, and want to contribute to that. When I was director of the Designated Lay Ministry Program, just to say too that when candidates receive bursaries, the money is really helpful. Um, I'm, I'm not going to suggest that it's not because, of course, it helps to fund their theological education. But the other thing that was so important to students was realizing that people throughout the church cared enough to donate to mission and service. And so that kind of intangible support was also really highly valued by the students. And I think we can't um, acknowledge that enough that, of course, the money matters, uh, but it's not the only thing. It is a symbol of that wider support that the church offers. Jennifer, you're taking me out of sort of the interview chair and reminding me of my own uh, faith journey and my theological education journey. And I was one of those people supported um, by the mission and service funds and the theological education support. And I was a single parent um, trying to make my way through. And it certainly was, as you said, that experience of the whole church supporting. Um, it also had for me an element of the Spirit's blessing. Like, um, I knew I couldn't get through without support. And this was a way of, um, of feeling blessed through people who donated by God and encouraged on my own journey. Um, so I, yeah, I have tremendous gratitude for that. 
important part important role that the the church played in my life at that time. Yeah, so, for sure. Um, me too. Yeah. That was my experience as a student as well, both when I was uh, studying for my Master of Divinity, but also when I was doing doctoral studies at Emmanuel College and and received some support from the church. Um, and just that sense of being held in community, I think, is uh, really important. And for you, what inspires you in this role? It's honestly the people that I'm able to meet and work with. So faculty and staff and students at our colleges, uh, my colleagues at the general council office and throughout the country and regional councils and all the volunteers and elected members, like people give a lot to, mm -hmm. to the church and to the, to the work of theological education. And that really is inspiring that, that people are so passionate about this that like they spend their free time doing doing some of this and so it's yeah it's really wonderful and so I'm really grateful for that opportunity. How does theological leadership impact the people outside of the church community? Sometimes we're not always aware of of how we're impacting others outside the church community um, but I think in in so many ways both lay people and ministry personnel are engaged in their communities in all in all kinds of ways, but often in terms of seeking partnerships and being able to work together with other organizations um, to see what the need is more broadly speaking and to figure out how the church can contribute. What I heard in, in what you were saying was that there's that the theological leadership and education leads to a particular orientation to the world that, you know, engages us in partnerships, engages us in community work, um, sees the neighbor and loves the neighbor as self. And if you were to just to take a deep breath in and then let it out and answer the question, um, what would you want the listener to know and what would you be inviting them into? Like your gifts do matter. Um, they matter both tangibly in people's lives in a, in a real way, but also, as I said earlier, in this intangible way, because the gifts signal the support of the wider community, the care of, of people who are strangers to one another, potentially. The importance and the impact of that, I, I think, can't be overstated. And so um, it's a real opportunity to uh, help support somebody who might be a future minister, certainly a future leader in the church and a current leader in the church as well, um, that that those gifts to the Mission and Service Fund really do make a significant difference, no matter what the size. Thank you, Jennifer. It has been both personally um, very moving to go back to my own days of theological education and to be reminded once again of the many people that surrounded me at that time and to be reminded of how this gift through Mission and Service keeps on going. Um, and the kind of enduring legacy that something like uh, the theological leadership provides. So thank you so much for giving us some time today. It's been really good to talk with you. Your gift for Mission and Service will help remove barriers to educational leadership and will remind students that they are uplifted by their community. Mm -hmm.